All right, hello, welcome geometry students. Today we'll be talking about doing trig in geometry. So just to set us up real fast, doing trig real fast, uh, so Katoa just tells us what the ratios are gonna be. Okay, so a lot of people have been asking me about, uh, what about uh, the trig? Wh where does the trig go, where does the angle go? Well, the trig goes right next to the angle. So the trig function goes right next to the angle because this is actually a ratio, and it's the ratio of the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. And if you notice, I have two different Greek letters. I have alpha and beta, okay, and they're going to represent two different things. Okay, so we're going to work with alpha first. So this is going to be the opposite side first. This is going to be the adjacent side first, and this will always be the hypotenuse. That doesn't change when you're working with this. Now, when we go to beta, I'm going to switch these two, okay? All right, so sine is definitely going to be, uh, well, let's change these to be nice, neat numbers because this right now, well, no, nah, let's leave it like that. You need to learn that trig is going to be messy sometimes. So I'll move this over a little bit so we have some room. Okay, so sine of alpha is going to be opposite over hypotenuse, so that's going to be 5 divided by uh, root 74. Okay, now if you remember in your algebra class, you can't have that. So you need to multiply top and bottom by root 74. So we're going to have 5 root 74 divided by 74. Okay. All right, and voila, I have my actual ratio all set up. Now cosine is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. So adjacent's right here, hypotenuse is right there. Okay, so that is going to be actually 7 divided by root 74, which we can't have, so we need to multiply top and bottom by root 74. So this is 7 root 74 divided by 74. Okay, and if you use Pythagorean theorem, you'll see I'm correct on this. Okay, now tangent of alpha is going to be really easy. It is going to be the opposite over the adjacent. So opposite's right here, adjacent's right here. So that's just going to be really easy. That's going to be 5 over 7. Okay, so what this is, is this number, whatever alpha is, is going to be equal to this ratio of the sides. Okay, and yes, these do have a fixed ratio. They do have fixed angles and stuff. Okay, all right, and we'll talk more about how to find that angle in a second. But this, this decimal that you get when you plug in sine of whatever angle alpha is for this triangle, Okay, you will, it will be equal to if you put this into the calculator and then divided by 74. And obviously these two, we would want them in parentheses on top, okay? Now sine of beta is going to be just the reverse of it, okay? So sine of beta is going to be like cosine of alpha, and it's going to be 7 root 74 divided by 74. Cosine is going to be 5 root... 74 divided by 74 and then tangent is going to be just the reverse it's going to be 7 divided by 5 okay so finding the ratios are pretty easy as long as you use SOHCAHTOA okay now in actually calculating this stuff and working with this this is what I'm going to show you okay so let's say we actually have a problem and we're going to work it out okay alright so Let's say that we were looking at the height of a flagpole, okay, and I knew that this was a right angle, and I knew that this was about, let's say, let's say I knew I was about 13 feet from the flagpole, okay. Oops, let's get some actual, okay, and once again, this is a right angle, so I can use right angle trig on here. All right, and this is me right here. Okay, now let's say that I knew that this was also, let's say I was looking up the angle of 24 degrees. Okay, now taking a look at this, this might be really scary if you uh, aren't using trick. Okay, so how do I find the actual height of the flagpole without breaking a neck? Okay, so what I would do is I would set up the problem. I would go, okay, I have opposite and I have adjacent right next to me. Okay, and so since I have opposite, I'm looking for the opposite side of 24 degrees and I have the adjacent side, I'm going to be using tangent. So I would attach tangent with the 24 degrees 
and yes you do need to attach it with it these will not separate unless you're doing something we'll talk about that later okay and that's going to be opposite so we'll sign that x divided by 13 okay opposite over adjacent now what we're going to do is since this is just a number this is literally just a number and this is an x divided by a number okay to get rid of this divide by a number we're going to times both sides by 13 so 13 times tangent of 24 degrees is going to be equal to x okay now when we put that in the calculator I'll show you how to do it okay now over here in Desmos if you click on the wrench right here you're going to see a whole bunch of options and stuff first off you need to make sure you're in degrees and every time you use Desmos you do need to click on degrees there it, it I haven't found a um, default button yet for it okay so once you click into there then you can move over and start doing your calculations so we've already done the hard work on the actual paper so 13 tangent so I'm gonna go 13 times tangent of 24 okay now what I've done is I've told the calculator these are now degrees not radians okay and radians are gonna be something completely different and they're never yeah they're never the same so if you think like, oh, all of a sudden I'm going to find that magic number where I don't have to switch degrees and radians, you'll never find it. Just trust me on it. Okay, and so that means that the height of the flagpole is going to be about 5.78 feet. Okay, which isn't a very tall flagpole, but nonetheless, this is how the flag actually is set up. Okay, all right, and this stuff rarely ever lies. Okay, all right. Now, now that we have that, we need to just talk about some calculations. Could we go tangent of 24 and then divide that by 13? Yes, because it is a number, you can treat it just like a number. You can divide it, you can times it, you can add it. You can go tangent of 24 plus 12. Okay. All right, I'd probably recommend tangent of 24 like this. There we go. All right, now some people might recommend that you put that in parentheses. I would highly recommend it too. So I'd put parentheses tangent of 24, and then I would add 12, just to make your minds a little bit safer. Okay. All right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to another problem. We're going to learn how to find angles. All right, now let's say we go back to a problem that looks like this. Now we know some of the side lengths. Let's say that this was 17 and this was 27 right here. Okay, but we didn't know what this angle was. Now obviously if I go back up to here, I would know this angle uh, right here by using the triangle in or the triangle sum addition rule which is all of the angles inside of the triangle are going to be adding up to 180 so we already know that that's 90 we already know that that's 24 and so this is going to be 66 degrees okay so we already know that that angle is going to be 66 degrees but if we are only given 90 then these two angles have to add up to 90 but I don't know where to start and that's where trig comes into play okay so on this one I have the adjacent and the hypotenuse so I'm going to use cosine and I'm going to use this as the letter X just to denote the unknown okay so cosine of X equals 17 divided by 27 okay now when trying to solve this one trying to do the inverse of cosine and trying to figure out what angle that is, you would actually use arc cosine. Now some people say uh, cosine inverse and stuff, and that's totally fine that you want to do that. But when you're putting uh, your information into uh, Desmos, you're going to be using arc cosine because that's the only way it recognizes it. Okay. All right, so now what happens when you do the arc cosine? The arc cosine cancels out the cosine over here, and we're left with just x. Okay, and x is going to be equal to the arc cosine of 17 divided by 27. Okay, so I'll show you how to put that into the calculator. Okay, interesting fact. When you're typing in random letters, it's going to assume that they're variables until you type in an actual function. Then it will take away the slider. Okay, now we put in 17 divided by 27. 
Okay, and I get 50.9 degrees. Now, to double check to make sure I did everything correctly, I haven't changed anything since last time, always make sure your calculator is in degrees. Okay? All right, and it is, so we're good. And voila, I now know that angle is going to be 50. Well, you could probably round that up to 51 and then say the other angle is going to be 39, I would say. You know, and the really cool thing is, is that all of this stuff is set up like this. Okay. All right. Now that is it for working with trig in geometry. That's the most complex stuff you'll have to do. I will talk to you guys later. Bye.